I'm Dave. I'm Rhonda. And this is Going, Going Somewhere, Somewhere Together. Together. to do our first review of our first campground when we started this journey in our big coach we call her Ali Bay. Ali Bay. <laughs> Ali Bay, yes. Ali Bay. We is she's a 13 36 foot tiffin uh, class A motorhome. And we got it a really good deal at Richardson's RV. So we wanted to do a review on our first experience in a campground which is called Wilderness Lakes in Menifee, California. It's part of the Thousand Trails, Trails membership. Yeah. yeah. So we would like to tell you some of the, the things that we thought was really interesting and nice about the place. Uh, there was a lot of activities scheduled throughout the week. So I mean, if you definitely uh, wouldn't get bored if you were looking for things to do during the week. You have every kind of sport that you can imagine. Uh, baseball diamond, basketball, tennis or pickleball, swimming, bicycling, a lot of horseshoes, horseshoes, shuffleboard. What's the other one? Um, they had the miniature golf thing. Miniature golf. Yep. Yes, yep. they had a little miniature golf course. And you just go up to the office and you request um, some of the equipment. Then you check it out kind of like a library book. So you tell them your site and your name and then they give you the equipment and then you turn it back in um, right before you leave. Or you can turn it in, you know, the same day, either way. Now the people at the front gate are really helpful, really nice. They, uh, they go overboard to explain how the system works. Uh, and it is first come, first serve, right? When you come yes, in? first yeah. come, first serve. So you cannot reserve your spot. There's so many spots though. There is. Oh, yeah. yeah, there is um, probably well, the, 300 spots to choose from. And the park is divided up into uh, segments like you got your 50 amp full hookups, then you have your 30 amp full hookups, and then you have like 30 amp with not full but just electric and water. And is there another one? There's a, and then there's like dry camping. Spots. They have a yeah. they have a section for um, tent camping. Tent camping. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you don't have a a, a, a RV to use, right. you can just come with your car and tent camp um, as well. And um, they have tiny tiny cottages or tiny houses to, yeah. and cabins to rent. We don't know what the price was on those. Right, because we're part of that membership, so yeah, we don't know what the price is, but. I think they're around somewhere around two or three hundred dollars a night to to uh, rent those for what the little houses yeah yeah the little houses and there's a lot of little houses there's probably 15 or 20 little houses that you can rent all right well now the, the one thing that we have to cover and of course this is personal it just depends on our what personal, you're looking for. our personal opinion yeah so here's the downside but it's because we stayed there for what 14 days. 14 days. So after 14 days, you kind of start noticing and get the little quirks and little things about the the place. Uh, we went up to go up to the little gym room and you See, couldn't get in. You couldn't get in. Yeah. Well, I put in the code that they gave us, the passcode on the door, and um, it wouldn't open. So I was disappointed that I couldn't uh, get in and, and look at the equipment or do yeah. some walking or bicycling on the equipment and such. Um, then there was something about the laundry rooms. Of course, they have like three, what, three or four laundry rooms? How many? They three have? laundry rooms. Three laundry rooms. Mm -hmm. They're kind of expensive from what I see. Uh, about two fifty for the laundry and $2 for drying. drying. Yeah, so it gets a little pricey, but hey, at least they're there. You know, you but you can save money if you download the app. And oh. you don't have to put in the quarters. Oh, really? Yes. I didn't know that. You can save, a, save some money and use the app that they um, offer, but we didn't do that. Okay. Up. So, the other thing is, what else happened that kind of upset us? 
You went in, we started uh, speaking of laundry. Oh, laundry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, the door was propped open when we went to go do our laundry. We had about four loads to do. And we left and came back because we were right around the corner, um, just, you know, with our car. And we came back and put the clothes in the dryer, left a little basket and a little laundry bag in there so that when we fold, folded our laundry, we could have something to carry it with. <clears throat> we came back and the door was shut. And locked. The door was locked. <laughs> and on the back side of the door, it said that the place gets locked up at nine o'clock. Sharp. Sharp, and we <laughs> didn't know that because the door was propped up and didn't see the sign. Uh, I guess it's probably in the rules or you know, whatever, but you know, it was unfortunate. So we had to wait till the next day, nine o'clock, to morning. get our, to retrieve our laundry. And of course, your, your laundry basket, your bag, everything was gone. It was because gone. They, our, our laundry was still there in the dryers, yeah. but the, it, the stuff that we used to transport the laundry was gone. And uh, we checked with the security office just to make sure if nobody turned it in at lost and found or if the security people put it somewhere. If they threw it away, yeah, the I was going to go says look for I'll it. throw it away. Yeah, the sign says, <laughs> it says they'll, throw it away. they'll throw it in the trash if anything is left behind. And we didn't know that and so we got caught off guard at 9.10. We showed up 10 minutes after 9 exactly and right. it was already locked up and we were already locked out. So we had to wait till the next morning. Then there's a couple other things that I was thinking about. You know, what's really neat is, you know, there's a lot of ducks and geese and so forth that hang out. A lot if, of fowl. Yeah, they, they um, you know, they have a habitat now that is, of course, man-made. And, of course, they're very, very tame. I mean, you can walk right through the birds and they don't take off. They just kind of look at you and give you your space. A lot of times geese will chase you or be mean. And they weren't mean at all. They were no. very nice yeah. and friendly. And um, if you wanted to give them some food, they kind of flock to you and come out and and uh, join the rest of the people eating or the geese eating. Right. Well, and they they come if you have any handouts that they're right there, Johnny on the spot. But the other thing is they they get really noisy. Like early in the morning, they have this uh, thing that they do where they fly in a circle and they all squawk and mm -hmm. I don't know what it is some ritual that they do, but every single day without fail. And then the other thing is we got on top of the uh, RV because we're I was cleaning the uh, all the ash off from the fire that uh, was over in Hemet and I noticed a lot of bird droppings. So that's the other thing that some of you uh, coach owners may not particularly like, like. and that's <laughs> that's going to go on the whole time you're there. So if you don't mind, I mean if you plan on getting up and rinsing the thing off so forth that's that's fine and then uh the amenities are kind of worn getting old yeah uh, looks some like of the they, shower tiles looks like they needed, haven't needed uh, to be repaired yeah. when i was taking a shower in there in the bathroom so we're just telling you this stuff so that you you will know if it doesn't matter to you i mean because sometimes you go out and camp and you don't have anything everything's you know you have to bring everything with you uh so a few inconveniences at an RV park are nothing. But if you go there to expect things to be pristine and nice, well, uh, I gotta give it a, you know, like a, like a three on the scale, maybe a two. Yeah, yeah. I, have, I have some other things that I wanted to mention. Um, they have, they're, at Wilderness Lakes, they have what's called uh, man-made canals. So there's water going in and out of the um, RV sites, which is very pretty and you can park right alongside the canal. Again, there's ducks and geese um, in the canal. You do not swim in the canal. It's just for um, the, the waterfowl or fishing. They have fishing. You have to get a permit every single time, every single day, excuse me. Every single day. Yes. Every single day that you want to fish, you have to get a permit regardless um, through the ranger. But uh, also what I wanted to mention is it's it's really pretty the canals are pretty but the um the footbridges the footbridges were yeah, out they're closed off they're closed off they have a caution tape across them so apparently they've been deemed unsafe or something yeah, yeah and that's unfortunate they're out of like five footbridges only one of them was uh, accessible 
and um, so that was kind of a disappointment we were riding our bikes around and you'll see the pictures of that was us riding around um, and enjoying it but we wanted to go across the bridges and we couldn't do that also one of my big pet peeves um, not only was the gym not open it wasn't open very early it was open at um, what did it say nine or ten yeah really late and I wanted it I wanted to get in there at like six in the morning I also wanted to go swimming earlier and the swimming pools were not open very early yeah. so it said 10 o'clock that the pool opens I and mean, they might close at nine I think they close at yeah. nine but they don't open very early and I wanted to get in there and do some uh, swimming exercises like um, what did they call that Cool. Aerobic, <laughs> aerobic, yeah, aerobic yeah. exercises, <laughs> swim, swimmer size or whatever, and I couldn't, I wasn't able to do that because of the the time restraint that they had. So a lot of things do not open until at least nine or ten o'clock. So if you're early risers like us, and I am, I like to get out there and walk and hike. Before it gets hot. Before it gets hot, yeah. because in yeah. California it gets hot. Yeah. And like, but we don't have to worry about that anymore, right? But we're, we're telling you in case you come to California and you want to go to this park as yeah. well. So don't plan on getting things done early um, unless you're on your own and just doing the walks. All right. Well, I think that kind of concludes it. Uh, hope so. Anyway, guys, remember to like, share, and subscribe. Help us build this channel. And uh, maybe we'll be doing some uh, merch in the future here. Uh, just giveaways is how we're going to probably start. We'll have a few giveaways in the future and we'll figure out how we're going to do that. All right, guys, see you on the next one. See ya. Toodles for now. As long as we're going somewhere together, I've got a quarter.